my main thing to see this year is the maturation of, of Coach Rick play calling. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of mixed with me. It's mixed. Um, I I feel like he can get a little bit more aggressive. I think sometimes he dials it back a little too much and it gives the other team more confidence. And I get a lot of guys get on me about, you know, give them, give them time, you know, this and that. But, you know, I like to see our tight ends get utilized a lot more because we always have tight ends. Um, I just see a few, a few different routes, even in the full state game. I forgot what commentator said it, but he was, he was saying, even in the first, the second half, he changed it up a lot. But in the first half, it was just, all the routes were simple. You know, they were just simple routes, you know, quick, quick slants or, you know, nothing, nothing misleading, no, 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 no kind of tight end going this way and receivers, you know, everything just seems, everything just seems simple, you know, so I like to see Coach Rick, you know what I'm saying, get, get, be more of a, an aggressive play caller. So know? I'm curious, Alon, um, great coach. we went back into the archives and your YouTube channel, we went back about a year and a half to when Mark Rick was first hired. I heard uh, the comments made on both sides. Mark Rick's a winner. He always churns out 10 and 11 win teams. Uh, he's good for Miami. Of course, he's alum. He understands the program, the culture, the atmosphere. He's going to be a perfect fit. Then I heard Mark Rick. He blows the big games. He never wins the big games. Yeah, he takes great talent and he plays down to the competition. What was your initial thought when Rick got the job? Both. Yeah. Both. I mean, I live up here in South Carolina. Um, I moved up here for my job. I've been up here for like 16 years now. So I, I, I watched the big losses. I'm in, I'm in the middle, the heart of SEC country, and watch him play against South Carolina and lose some games against South Carolina when South Carolina wasn't good. You know, watch him, you know what I'm saying, not win games that, that he probably should have won. So you, 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 you have to take – you have to weigh both sides. A lot of people don't want to weigh both sides when the coach or the player is on your team. You only want to see the best out of them. But you have to – you have to pay attention to everything. Ten win seasons in SEC is is phenomenal, but at the end of the day, if you don't if you don't win the big one, and you're at a program for a long time, that's what that's what they're gonna look at. Especially in college football, they're gonna look at how much talent you had and did you win the big one. And Hurricane fans are the same way. If you're here for five years and not and and not in the national championship picture, not there, not playing in the playoffs. Or if you're consistently losing big games, Miami Hurricane fans can say what they want to say. They'll call for your head because they do it. They they will do it. They will call for your head. You have to win. I mean, you get paid a lot of money, so you you have to win as a coach. It's, it's your responsibility. If you, or your job, you have to do the your job, or which is you know produce. So people aren't going to just be happy with ten win seasons at Miami. Now we have five national championships. They're not just going to be happy with ten win seasons. It's it's just I'm a realist. I'm a Miami fan, been one my whole life, and I know how Miami fans are. They're not going to be happy with 10 win seasons. They'll be happy if you win a national championship and only score 17 points a game. They'll be good with that because you won. But if you're if you're getting beat 21 to 17 in, in games and you're not putting up the points and you're not winning big games, they'll eventually call for your head. That's hey, Alonso, just, I totally, I totally get it when you make the comment right out of the gate that uh, yes, I agree, and yes, I agree because uh, I got a different perspective than you. Obviously, you know the program, you know the culture there at Miami, and then, like you say, living in South Carolina and being a big college football fan, checking out the SEC, I've got the national perspective. I cover a lot of SEC games and uh, was actually in SEC country as a sports director down there for six years, covering Ole Miss, Alabama, and uh, Mississippi State. But Mark Richt, you know, if the ball bounces the other way in the 2012 SEC championship game in which he got very unlucky against Alabama, his team played a great lights out game. Keith Marshall, Todd Gurley, Aaron Murray and crew. And um, they they played a great Alabama team to the wire. They were four yards short. They were one play short. They were one second short. You could fill in any of those blanks. And if they had one more play, they go and probably just annihilate Notre Dame in the national championship game. So that's to his credit that he didn't get the bounce of the ball and it, it would have been you know from following this alonzo when you can mark down a national championship next to your name as a coach then the narrative completely changes but then the critics might say he should have been in that position five other times and he wasn't it was just that one time he got to that place and that's what they look at look at les miles he has a national championship you know is it's, it's it, it, it's what have you done for me lately? League on, on on every on from college all the way up to even high school is what have you done for me lately? You know, and, and when you 
when you consistently get those top recruiting classes, the ex, it, I don't think no one is going to expect you to be Nick Saban, but they do expect, you know what I'm saying, they do expect some greatness. You know, they, they, you, know you win one, maybe they want two. You know, but that, that's just, that's, I mean, people, people pay a lot of money to go to these games, and that's what they expect. And I don't, I, I, I love what he's doing for, for what Mark Rick has done for this program. You can't ask anything. He has brought everything to this program, and I would not wish for another coach right now, period. I would not want another coach but him. I was on the fence when we hired him, but I would not want another coach from but him. But I definitely want him to be more aggressive as a play caller. It, it's just – it's anything. Just like Manny Diaz had a great year last year. The defense would play lights out that last year. The stats this year show something different. So you want to, you want to get better. You want to get where you're at. You always want to get better. So as a, as, a, as a team and, you know, a season ticket holder, as a fan, you want to see a team – you want to see a team do better. Everybody wants their team to be Clemson and Alabama right now. That's what everybody that's what everybody looking at. Everybody wants their team to be Clemson or Alabama right now. That's and it. that's why I want my team to be Clemson and Alabama. Period. I don't want them to be third to Clemson. I, I want them to be Clemson and Alabama. That's that's where you want your team to be at. Right now. And it takes time. It it took the Dabo time. They wanted to run Dabo out of town. Up here in Carolina. They wanted Dabo Sweeney. They was when he, when Steve Spurrier was beating him all in five, six, seven years, they wanted him gone. Clemson stayed with him. He made a few adjustments. I think he was on um, calling plays on offense or, or D, I think it was offense. He hired an offensive coordinator, hired a bunch of key assistants, and two back-to-back -back national championships. I'm probably going to be in his third one this year. You know, so you, it takes time. It takes time. We've been down for a long time. It takes time to build a program. So I'm yeah, definitely not like expecting it. Exactly. It looks I'm like just, Dabo's going to get back there. And unless some team from South Florida can derail them in the yeah. ACC championship game. <laughs> I am, man, I, I, I believe I'm going I'm, I'm to tell you, Mark, we, we're going to meet him there. I believe we're going to meet him there. I really believe that we have the talent, we have the coaching, we have the ability to meet them in an, in an, um, an ACC championship game, and it's up for grabs from there. But me sitting right here, I can honestly tell you, after watching the, uh, the first few games of the season and watching how Coach Rick in the second half called those players in the second half against um, Florida State, I really believe that we can – Meet those guys in the ACC championship game, and, and it's up. It's in North Carolina. Believe me, if we meet them, I'll be there. It's, it's up for grabs. Then I think we can meet them. It's, it's a one-game deal in Clemson. I don't think anyone would argue, as you just said, is one of the two best teams in the country. But in a one-game situation, we saw North Carolina push them two years ago, and Virginia Tech pushed them last year. And sure, they escaped, but uh, they they were pushed to the hilt. Uh, maybe not to the last few seconds, but one possession game, fourth quarter, late. And uh, both of those teams talking uh, UNC and Virginia Tech were kicking on sides to try to get the ball back and, and uh, win the game. So they were pushed pretty well. And this would be a more talented Miami roster than the Virginia Tech or the North Carolina roster that took on Clemson in the last two years. All right, Delonta129, as you can see, he knows his Miami football. He loves college football and he knows it uh, start to finish. So you got to join him there on his YouTube channel. Uh, just look up Alonzo1219. Alonzo, we appreciate you uh, laying down the knowledge for us. Man, I appreciate it, man. Thanks, thanks for giving me this platform. Um, I make sure I let every, all my all of my fans know, all of my friends as well. You know, please check out Mark Rogers. He it's a ton of college videos that you can go see. I you just can't be a fan of one team. You have to. I sit up late night sometimes. I watch UCLA play. I watch. Wyoming and Boise State play. <laughs> That's it. I got night I'm sitting on my couch. It's just it's I enjoy college football. It's just the excitement, just all the different atmospheres and watching the people go cuckoo and it is it's it's probably the best sport in the world to me is college football.